If you want to run faster, there's this one key exercise that Usain Bolt used to get 90% of his speed gains. When athletes come to me telling me how they're struggling to run faster, I always ask them if they're doing this one exercise and they always say no. What's good everybody? My name is Just Jamari. I'm a strength and conditioning coach for a couple years now. I train athletes to run faster and transform their athleticism. To actually show this one simple exercise, I'm going to break down two videos of Usain Bolt's training by his coach, Glenn Mills which by the way, I actually paid Glenn Mills for a training program that he put, did with Usain Bolt. It's like a whole year of training. So I actually know like his actual, like the statistics and like the little things about it, but I'm not gonna share it. There's one exercise I said that gave him 90% of the gains and I'm going to break it down right here. What do you think it is? Comment down below before it happens. What do you think is giving him 90% of his gains besides genetics and things of that nature, six foot five, great limb structure, great tendon structure. Everything's really perfect when it comes to Usain Bolt. Yes, genetics play a role, but he still had to train to run the fastest time of all time. There's one exercise that did it. This is the meat and potatoes of sprinting faster. Does it sound underwhelming? It's because it is. Timed sprints or racing sprints gives you the most gains in terms of your speeds. Don't let genetics play a role in, oh, I can't get faster, my genetics suck. That's not true, you need to compete. There's a reason why you only get faster during your season is because you're constantly competing at the track meets, right? There's a reason why you run personal bests during track meets is because you're competing, right? So a lot of people say like, oh, well, competing just gets you to that max threshold. It actually increases the threshold. Just like doing dunk attempts increases your dunk threshold. So if your sprint time is only a 4.8, if you compete two times a week, eventually the competition alone, just sprinting alone, will actually get that 4.8 to a 4.6. Not from improving technique, from improving the raw output of athletic traits needed to run faster. By the way, I have a speed improvement checklist, so it's everything you possibly could need to improve your speed on a checklist, and then you can learn the things you need to be doing and make sure you're checking it off every time you have a speed session. Um, all It's free. Just put your email in. It's right there in the link below. Go hop on the, the improvement checklist. You also get an example workout of something I've done in the Speed Academy. It's really, really good. It's a bunch of resources, a bunch of learning you could do completely for free. Just go check it out in the description. This is due to something called auto-regulation, right? There's some other names for it, but I like to call it auto-regulation, where you stress your body and your body regulates and adjusts its body to run as fast as possible due to the stress you're putting on it. So it's just like squatting in a sense where you squat a really heavy weight, let's say it's a five rep max, and then you break down your body and you actually get weaker in that session due to fatigue and stress. And then you rest for, let's say three to four days and you come back and now you squat five to 10 more pounds. It's the same thing for sprinting. You're going to sprint a certain amount of distance, racing people and timing people, which is going to be max effort, max output, 100% intensity, and then once you stress your body down after let's say 120 meters worth of sprints, then you rest for a couple days, you come back and you run faster. That's all it takes. There's a reason why athletes can legit never touch a weight room. I've seen guys run 10.6, 10.4 and never touch a weight room. There's actually a guy who in the Olympics stated, who runs sub, sub 10, he runs 9.9, .9, who in the Olympics stated he never touched a weight room to that day. And he ran sub 11 or sub 10, I'm sorry. And this is because sprinting helps you run faster. You cannot try to sprint faster and avoid sprinting. You cannot try to beat your competition and avoid competing, right? There's a reason why people like Allen Iverson in 5v5 in basketball, all he said he did was he never worked out a day in his life and all he did was play 5v5 basketball. He competed against people who were slightly better than him, his level, and improved the threshold of his skill just by playing the game alone. You can develop power, rate of force development, elasticity, force production, all the key aspects of sprinting from sprinting alone, even ankle stiffness can all be developed through max effort sprint training. And clearly I'm not saying don't do weight training. I'm clearly weight training is important. You need to do your full range of motion lifts, your quarter range of motion lifts. You need to do your speed lifts. All that stuff is important. I program all that in the speed Academy, but at the end of the day, if you want to run faster, you need to run fast, stress your body so you get tired and then recover and you will get faster. It is the number one way to run faster is to sprint. Just like the number one way to jump higher is to jump. The number one way to squat more is to squat. You don't tell someone to run faster by squatting. 
You don't tell someone to squat more by running. They need to go squat. It's all the same thing in every single sport, but yet 90% of people are just just doing speed training sessions where all they're focusing on is technique versus giving your body a stimulus to run faster. You have to give your body a stimulus so it can adapt. If it cannot adapt to a stimulus, you're not going to run faster. And constantly trying to improve technique or constantly staring at a phone, comparing your technique to Usain Bolt's every single practice, and you're not actually going 100%, you're not going to run faster. And actually, I'll break this down because I'm on a tangent. When you actually are looking at your technique, I'm saying actually a lot, oh my God. When you're looking at your technique and you're comparing it, let's say you're trying to improve your dorsiflexion in acceleration, you're trying to pull your toes up and pull, pull your foot up so it's in dorsiflexion. You start thinking at the conscious level. This makes your max output go from 100% to, I can give you a rough number, probably about 80 to 90%. And for you to make an adaptation for speed in the research, it shows you need to go 95% or 100, which is a huge difference at the central nervous system level. Basic terms, you need to be running 95 to 100% max intensity, max output, racing someone, timing someone. Think about how hard you run at a track meet versus practice. You need to be running that hard during practice all the time to get speed gains. And the second you start thinking consciously, you drop all the way under 95% and you simply cannot get faster that way. So if you wanna know the secret to Usain Bolt's speed, besides him being six foot five in genetics, forget about that for right now. The secret to him improving his speed from, on, from, from there on is racing Johan Blake, racing Asafa Powell, racing the fastest people in the world constantly at practice, never taking a day off from racing people, two to three, four times a week racing people. Johan Blake, also one of the fastest people in the world, guess who, he, who his training partner was? Usain Bolt. Go ahead, blame genetics, but at the end of the day, they raced each other. They went max intensity sprints. And if you can't race someone who's faster than you or, or try to chase someone down who's slower than you, then go find a, a phone, go find a cone and time yourself. And if you can't do that, then go get some resistance and, and sprint as hard as possible with a hill or, or sled resistance behind you. And that will give you 90% of gains. If you are not fast, you have to do this. So I've gone on enough of a tangent at this point. Literally all it is is max effort sprinting, okay? People have already clicked off, I don't care. If you wanna run faster, you need to run at max effort. This isn't clickbait. Yes, you need to lift. Yes, you need to do plyometrics. Yes, you need to do bounding and broad jumps and squats and deadlifts. But at the end of the day, if you are not sprinting too times per week or at least one times per week you will not get faster that's all but if you want to know some exercises to pair with your speed sessions these sprinting sessions that you must be doing at a foundational level then go watch this video right here where i give you some of the best exercises to pair with your speed session including the lifting portion too